In the future, calpane inhibitors can be used to help these people with Herceptin-resistant breast cancer, thus bridging the gap in cancer treatment. Thank you very much. As everyone in this audience is no doubt aware, spring came early this year. We have birds outside singing, flowers are blooming, and I even had a few mosquito bites in early April. And this makes sense, right? Animals and plants can take advantage of unseasonally warm weather to get a head start on their breeding season. But what I want to show you today is that weather conditions thousands of kilometers away from here can also exert an important influence on what's going on right in our own backyards, and that climate change could potentially disrupt these associations. So for my PhD, I study a small migratory songbird, the American redstart, shown on my slide. Redstarts migrate south during the winter time to spend the winter in the tropics, shown in this graph in orange. And then in early spring, they migrate up north to North America, including Ontario, to breed. Now, previous research has shown that the amount of rainfall on their tropical wintering habitats is really important for this species. And that's because red starts feed exclusively on insects, and insect abundance is tightly linked to the amount of rainfall in these dry tropical habitats. So in years with more rainfall, there's more food available for red starts, they're able to fatten up more quickly, and depart on their northward migration earlier. So I was interested in whether these same patterns translate up onto the breeding grounds. In other words, in years of greater rainfall down south, do we see red starts here in Ontario sooner? And it turns out we do. If you take a look at the figures I've shown here, you can see that in years of greater rainfall down south, we have red starts arriving and breeding right here in Ontario earlier. And now, as promised, I want to tie this back into how these associations could become disrupted by climate change. And the problem is that climate scientists are predicting that weather conditions will continue to get drier and drier down in the tropics. And so that means less food for these birds, later migration, and they'll be arriving here to breed later. And now that, in combination with the fact that we're likely to be seeing earlier and warmer springs here in Ontario, means that these birds might not get here early enough. By the time they arrive, lay their eggs, and their chicks hatch, they may have missed that all-important peak in insect food abundance that happens here in early spring that they rely on to feed their chicks. And this could lead to population declines. So I think this type of research is really valuable because it's allowing scientists to see these connections between animal behaviors and weather patterns all across the globe for these migratory species. And hopefully it'll allow us um, to best anticipate the challenges that these species will face with climate change so that we can protect their most vulnerable populations and habitats. Thank you. <laughs>